Good morning and welcome to the Kilik Co Market Update. This week, the European Central Bank has finally announced the end to its quantitative easing program. At the moment, it's buying 30 billion euros worth of bonds per month, and it had previously said it would keep this up until September, but it hadn't given any guidance as to its strategy after this date, so investors had been quite keen for more information. Now, the quantitative easing program has been in place since 2015, and since then there has been a clear improvement in the European economy. So the growth rate has picked up, as has the inflation rate. However, the growth rate has started to go down just a little bit over the last few months. So some investors have wondered whether the quantitative easing program would be extended past September. However, on the other hand, the ECB is actually running out of bonds to buy. It has a rule that says it's not allowed to own more than 30% of the total debt in circulation in each country. And it's actually getting fairly close to those levels, so it can't carry on this quantitative easing program indefinitely. So yesterday in its announcement, it has said it has to balance between these two issues, so the declining growth and the lack of bonds. And it has said that from September, it will be reducing its monthly bond purchases from 30 billion euros worth to 15 billion euros worth. And then from December this year, it will be cancelling the program altogether. So overall, I think that is good news. It is a statement of confidence in the European economy, and it's good that they don't think that after December, the economy will continue to need this support. So that part is good news. However, there were some fairly negative comments about the interest rates. So Mario Draghi said that he doesn't expect an interest rate rise in Europe for at least another year. So that was taken as a slightly negative statement. And therefore, we did see a fall in the euro. And we have now got quite a significant divergence in interest rate policy between the US and Europe. So as you can see by this chart here, this compares the interest rates in the two countries from the start of 2017. So as you can see for Europe, the rate has been at 0% the entire time. And as I said, it's not expected to rise for at least another year. The US, on the other hand, has raised rates sev several times. It raised rates one more time on Wednesday this week, so the rate is now at 2 and it expects a total of four rate rises for the whole of 2018. So that shows that the economy in the US is doing well, it can withstand higher rates. And normally we do expect that higher rates encourage a stronger currency. So it's not surprising that this week the euro has lost strength versus the dollar. So good news there if you are heading to Europe on holiday this summer. We've also been looking at China this week. Donald Trump has again been talking about tariffs, so that could potentially be a negative for China. But there have been a couple of other pieces of potentially good news for the country. The first is that the MSCI Emerging Markets Index, and this is what most tracker funds or emerging markets passive funds will focus on, this index has histor historically not contained any shares listed domestically in China. It has contained Chinese companies that are listed in either Hong Kong or the US, but nothing actually listed in China. But from this month, it has said it will be including domestically listed Chinese shares, known as A shares. So these will start to be included. A few have been included so far, and the proportion will slowly increase over the coming months. And this will mean that passive funds and ETFs focusing on emerging markets will be forced to buy these shares as well. So that should be good news for the overall China. Chinese market. And the second piece of good news comes from the Chinese government. So they're getting slightly annoyed about the fact that some major Chinese companies are not listed in China. So for example, Alibaba, that's worth $539 billion. That's currently listed in the US. Tencent, $499 billion. That's currently listed in Hong Kong. So the Chinese government is slightly annoyed that companies this large are not actually listed in China itself. So they've been talking about some initiatives to relax the Chinese listing rules to allow these companies to list in China as well. And if that happens, it will mean that perhaps more Chinese investors will buy into these companies. It will open up the companies to a wider investor base. And that has to be good long term for the valuation. So I think that's definitely good news for the Chinese market as a whole. And lastly this week, we have had the start of the World Cup, and we are expecting a surge in beer sales over the coming weeks. Now, AB InBev, which is the world's largest beer company, is a major sponsor of the World Cup, 
and it's the owner of Budweiser. And it's just announced it will be launching its largest and most expensive ever advertising campaign for the World Cup. So this will be going out to 50 different countries and it will be trying to expand the reach of Budweiser into various new emerging markets. So keep an eye out for those adverts over the coming week. Now, moving on to the week ahead, a fairly quiet week, not many companies reporting, but we will be looking forward to results from Ashdead and Ferguson. That's it from us. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.